networking, security, and Wireshark. So in my previous videos, I explained that if some actor got access to the traffic going out of your home router, say it's your ISP or a government or a corporation, they can understand both where you're going in terms of what websites, um, both, and also in some cases what you're doing on those websites. And then forget the fact that when you actually connect to certain websites like Facebook, all your privacy is basically gone at that point. So there are various solutions to this, one of them being VPNs, which I'll cover in a separate video. But the other one, which is more extreme, is something known as Tor. So what Tor is, is a technology or a software or a tool that allows users to connect from their own internet connection through this big network of nodes called this a Tor network, to destination web servers and DNS without anyone locally being able to snoop and understand what they're actually doing. So how does it work? Well, the first thing is that in order to connect to the Tor network and browse anonymously, you need the Tor browser installed. Tor browser is a web browser you install on your machine. It's available from the Tor website and it looks something like this. And it's a little bit different than a regular browser in that before you actually can browse any website, you need to connect to the Tor network. So that's what this connect button does. So once you click connect, it's going to go through a bunch of connection routines. And what's happening when that happens is this. Number one, your uh, Tor browser has a full inventory of all these Tor nodes. There are thousands of Tor nodes, which is essentially the Tor software running on public web servers on the internet across the globe. This inventory is known to all Tor users because it's needed in order to find and define a path. So when you actually kick off the connection to Tor, your browser selects a path randomly through this network. So say, for example, we want to go from here to here to here to here, here, and then here, and then this is out. So this node here where we enter, this is known as our entrance, and the one that we exit, the Tor network to the public internet, so over here is the public internet, this is the exit. So the first step is to actually define this. So you go look through the inventory and your browser randomly selects this list of nodes that your traffic will eventually traverse. So that's step number one. So step number two, you've connected to the first node, you know your path, and the way that Tor ensures your anonymity is that when you connect to this node, the only thing this node gets to see, it does get to see your source IP address, but does not know what destination you've asked Tor to go to. The only thing that this node sees is the IP address of the next node. So the instruction that you give to this node is, hey, connect to this, this node. But you don't actually reveal to this node what the final path is. So this is something known as onion routing, where what Tor does is it has layers of encryption on top of one another, where as I go through this first node, it peels off this first layer of encryption, which then says, hey, okay, go to this node. And then this node gets the message, and then it peels off the next layer of encryption, and the instruction it's got, it says, go to this node. And then so, so on and so forth. You get to the next one, it says, go to this one. The next one says, go to this one. And so on and so forth, until you hit the exit, and then the exit is the only one that actually has the address that you're actually trying to go to, and then your traffic is taken to the web server. So that is in effect how Tor maintains your anonymity, is that you're going through various nodes. Each of the nodes only knows what the next instruction is, meaning like where to go next, except for the last one, which knows the web server you wanna to get to. The last one does not know your source IP because it's, your traffic has gone through all these different layers prior to that. And the first one, knows your source IP, but does not know the destination that you're heading to. So in a nutshell, this is how Tor maintains anonymity. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, uh, you'll know that DNS is a concern. When you need to access a website, you need to first access a DNS server. And so if your home machine used Tor, but your DNS query still went directly over the internet to the DNS server, well, then your privacy is gone because even though the snoopers, whether it be your ISP or someone else locally, can't see your web traffic and where that's going. 
they'll see that you're going to Google anyway because you're going to get the DNS server response. So the way that Tor handles this is that when you're actually using the Tor browser, all of your traffic for DNS is actually tunneled through the same path that your web traffic is going to, but then instead of to the web server, it goes to the DNS server. Now, this DNS server may not be a DNS server local to you, because obviously, if you're going through a randomized set of servers across the globe, this is just whatever DNS server is available closest to the exit node. However, it still ensures that the DNS server itself, if the DNS server keeps logs, is not able to log your source IP as the source of that query. So that's how Tor handles DNS secure security. Now, Tor isn't perfect by any means. Um, there's a trade-off to having all of your traffic route through multiple nodes all over the world. Um, and the number one trade-off is performance, okay? Um, the fact that you have to go through all these hops means that you are sacrificing things like bandwidth. You're obviously sacrificing latency because you've got to go all across the globe, potentially from you know one continent to another and back in order to get to the from the entrance node to the exit node and then out. So performance is, is a big concern when you're using Tor. Um, two is compatibility, okay? Um, not all websites are available through the Tor browser. And certainly it may be difficult to do things like use Tor to run like mobile applications, even though in theory you could set up special Tor proxies and things like that, such that it tunnels all your phone traffic through Tor. Um, there are gonna be compatibility issues with a lot of applications. So not applications can route through Tor. Okay, so those are the major two concerns um, in terms of the actual user experience. Now, the third concern is that Tor is not 100% foolproof, okay? And I'll explain why. It is the closest thing you have to full anonymity online. But there have been examples of certain state actors who have access to track users on Tor. Now, that's not to say that they can actually suck up all the data from all these servers and then know what everyone's doing on Tor at a given time. It means that if there's a certain user that they've targeted and said, hey, I really need to know that, that what is happening, this user is doing on Tor, there's ways to, to uh, infiltrate or compromise certain Tor nodes such that they can actually track that user. It's an incredibly expensive effort and time intensive as well to do. So this is where I say, well, for the 99.9% of users, um, you're going to be fine and, and fully anonymous using Tor. Remember, these Tor nodes, these are just volunteers who run these, this node software. This is not a paid endeavor where these, these folks are paid to do this, which is great because it means that this is open source and it, it's more, you know, it's not cor corporate run, it's not government run. But at the same time, that means that um, you're at the mercy of each individual operator to keep these things secure. So if some kind of agency decides, hey, I'm going to actually compromise a whole chunk of the Tor network and actually have backdoors into the nodes, well, then they can actually start tracing traffic through as opposed to all of this being anonymous. Okay, last two things about Tor. Number one, let's talk about the type of web servers you go to. Um, because even though we talked about how Tor anonymizes your traffic so that the web server doesn't know who's accessing it and people who are snooping over here don't know what website you're going to, if you go to this web server and log in with something that like a username and password, okay, like say this is Facebook and you decided I'm just going to go to Facebook through Tor. Um, well, then Facebook knows that you're going through Tor and knows that, yeah, this is you because they've tracked you when you access Facebook normally through your home internet. And now they know, hey, you, act, you have Tor. <laughs> so not only do they still are able to track you and say, hey, this connection is actually coming from over here, right? They're just using Tor today. Um, they know you're a Tor user, and now they know even more about you. They know that you're security conscious. They know you're technical, right? So if you're going to use Tor for anonymity, don't be logging into sites. Don't be adding or submitting credentials because these companies are smarter than that. They also know about Tor. They know these IPs of the Tor edge nodes, and they're just going to say, add that piece of data to the profile they already have on you. The last thing I'll say is let's talk about the dark web. Okay, so I'm going to put DW down here. So Tor, when you read about Tor and you hear about it, you'll often hear this concept of the dark web or the dark net. Okay? Um, what this is, is a set of websites that are only accessible 
via the Tor network. You can't get to these things if you just come from the internet this way. Okay. Um, so there's a whole, I mean, you could spend hours and hours researching the dark web, what kind of websites are available, what kind of uh, individuals use the dark web. But I just wanted to explain it in the sense of how it works from a network perspective. You can only get to these sites through, the, through a Tor node. Um, they're not indexed on web, on web search engines, so you have to actually go through specialized search engines on Tor and indexes and, and um, other pages. But, uh, but that's the dark web, okay? You'll often hear it associated with Tor, but know that you don't need to be accessing the dark web when you're using Tor. Tor, for the most part, for most users, is to use to actually access regular websites um, and, and do it anonymously. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions on the topic we've covered, please join the Discord server where we talk all things network. Until next time.